cause and progeny and so on. So what is this each of art? Right? It is a two-way channel for efficient flow of goods and services in and out of villages. And it has created a unique opportunity for ITC. Now this is not created an opportunity where next quarter I can go and my earnings per share is gone. It is created a unique opportunity for ITC in the next quarter century. Because if we can win the trust of these 800 million people who we help develop prosperity, we can sell our brand to them. We can sell the strength of our values to them. And I would like to see anybody, any multinational in the world, who would be able to compete with us in this market of tomorrow if we invest over a period of time. Some of these markets will, will give results earlier and some of them will give later on. So therefore we have to create an opportunity which is there in the short run, in the medium run and in the long run. And we have to have the conviction that we will actually get there. And we need the participation of all these people to, to help us know what their needs are so that we can customize the solution. Right? And we can actually therefore co-create this opportunity by creating wealth simultaneously as we create productivity and also exploit this market as we go along. Now, so we are really helping transform the rural societies and converting them into economic, wider and economic organization. But we have challenges. It's not been as simple as you think. But one, of the, one of the basic issues was the promise that we will buy from you at the farm gate. And when inflation took place and government wanted to manage that inflation, they invoked that Essential Commodities Act, which said you cannot store more than 5 tons somewhere or 20 tons somewhere of any agri commodities. So can you imagine that a player like us who had invested so much and promised to the, to the farmer that I will buy from you. Yes, I can buy from him, but I will store it somewhere. So much so that I am a part of the value chain that is going to actually reduce costs to the, to the affluent consumer, right? International and national, by taking these agri commodities in a in a in a in, in, in a manner where they can, it can be traceable and it is its identity is preserved because then that's how you create value. If you mix it up, then the value is gone. If you if you keep its identity preserved, the value is larger. So all that was not possible because we could not store. So you can imagine in one fell swoop, the shift, knee jerk shift in policy delivered a body blow to an enterprise that we had taken so many years and so much of passion and so much of conviction and commitment to build. The other day I was with the Prime Minister and I made this point to him that, you know, do not club us with speculators. Do not club us with those who buy when it is available, then hoard it, and when it becomes uh, you know, expensive, then you go and sell it in the market. We are not there. We are actually helping the farmer to reach the market. And we are adding value by creating biscuits and packaged atta and, and by, by converting the, you know, the agri commodities into higher branded end of the market and delivering to the people so that we can get a better value to the small and marginal farmer at a lower cost. So there has been this uncertainty and we have to again rebuild. And then, you know, I, do I look to you like a spider? You know, Robert Bruce and spider. You know, try and try again. Yes, I am a spider. So we're getting back and re-establishing. Re See, the farmer doesn't understand the Sexual Commodities Act and, you know, why do we not buy? You know, they've had such bad experience with people. They suddenly say, oh, we knew this was a big company. You know, when it comes to actually buying, you know, they would not be there. I would still 
take all this and the middle man is upset with me because I sold it to you last time. But now he says I am going to you know, teach you as to how you go to ITC. So these are many, many you know, obstacles. That's why I say it requires public, people and private partnership to put it all together. Now there are other opportunities and I, I don't know whether there is enough time or not but you know because we leave some time for question and answer. I want to tell you there's the biggest opportunity assuming the roles we gave rise to productivity and if we were supported and we created really you know twice the productivity <laughs> so land would be rendered surplus. Uh, we are more concerned about food security but if we raise productivity and we are showing wherever we are going productivity is little. 30%, 40%, 50%. And wherever we created water, underground resources, productivity has shot up from one crop to two crops. Assuming that we are supported, right? And we can accelerate this. And productivity really rises everywhere. Then, you know, I just want to tell you that the real opportunity, because if you see the the GDP coming from services, GDP coming from industry, and the employability, the largest employability per unit of GDP is on agriculture. So if our demographic dividend is to really pay out for us, then we have to find livelihood for 10 million people every year, additional livelihood. And we have to play for our strengths. If you go to business school, they tell you, play from your strengths and, and attack the weaknesses of your competitors. What are our strengths? We are the second largest uh, arable land in the world. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have manpower and we have people who can work on the farms. They are hard working. So what should we do? Now what have we done? We have said, you corporates cannot do corporate farming of trees. We said you, you cannot you, you cannot fed trees because somebody thought that because the source of wood was only our our uh, forest and India is, is is shy of resources both water and and forest for 18 percent of global population we have only four uh, percent of water and 2.4 percent of land mass and only one percent of forest resource so. You know, you said don't cut the forest resource. But nobody said let's have policy that encourages growing of trees. So to discourage them from felling forests, what did they say? You can import wood at no duty or 5%. All of you know that you can import furniture, you know, at a very small. So what happens? You know, it's a long-term industry. It is more than even infrastructure. We want to grow teak tree. It takes 28 years. <coughs> Now who in India is thinking that long term so that you can grow a tree tree tree? So I will give you an illustration of how the agricultural or land based output combined with adding value to that and creating industry out of it is the largest multiplier of livelihood creation. Because we have we have 30 million hectares of degraded forest lands and we have another 30 million hectares of waste lands. So what should we really do? And I want to give you this example from IPC's uh, thing I already told you about. Now, there are multi benefits that you can create a hundred million uh, dollar, hundred million people employment opportunity if we created a wood based value chain, we can have a benefit of green cover, it can, it can be a carbon sink, it can preserve our soil, which is a big problem India is facing, it can be a source of biomass for energy, uh, which is carbon neutral, and we can also have it as a source of biochemical. A renewable plantations on 10 million hectares can help produce 20,000 megawatts of power of electricity and sequester 500 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. This is all is available on the last year I delivered an annual speech where this, the agroforestry potential. So if you want to go to our website and you want to read it because this can be done in bundles. 
you know, entrepreneurs can actually do this in bundles and, and need not 